What else possibly could we do right now to hold Vladimir Putin accountable? Well, there, there's, there's no question that the most important thing the United States could do right now uh, is to pass the supplemental uh, and pass the uh, aid uh, for Ukraine. Uh, it's been delayed too long. Uh, it's impacting on our credibility. Uh, the most important thing we could do is provide those funds to make clear that Putin will not succeed in Ukraine. That's probably the best way to get back at Putin. Well, right now, sir, frankly, it doesn't look like there is a clear path for that aid to pass in the House of Representatives, and we won't know the answer to that for about two weeks. So are we not now looking at a Vladimir Putin who not only may be emboldened at home with the death and effective silencing of his most vocal opposition and potentially emboldened abroad as well on signs that the U.S. support for Ukraine may be nearing its end? Well, look, there, there's no question this is a pivotal moment. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think it was very important for the United States and NATO to come together to draw a line on Putin uh, and make clear that he would not succeed in being able to destroy Ukrainian democracy. Uh, that's the right step to take. And it is important for the United States. It's important for our relationship with NATO to be able to now provide the additional military assistance. But let me tell you something. Uh, I think uh, that President Biden, uh, if he's blocked by the Congress, I think he ought to be looking for other ways to try to provide this aid to Ukraine. Uh, there, there cannot be an acceptance of the fact that Congress fails on this issue. That's not good enough. We can't just stand back and accept that kind of result. This is too important to our credibility to the world that we have to stand by our word that we would provide aid to Ukraine. So uh, if Congress can't uh, come forward, then I fully support the president of the United States finding other ways to provide both the weaponry and the money necessary to keep them in this war. I suspect some of these conversations are happening right now in Munich. Secretary, you mentioned NATO, and there are a lot of uh, European leaders who are asking questions about what might happen if Donald Trump is reelected. President Biden spoke earlier today in reaction to Donald Trump's comments from over the weekend about encouraging Russia to attack NATO countries who do not meet their commitments. We've reported that he's looking at a two-tiered NATO that might, in fact, pull or somehow revoke Article 5 from those countries that don't meet their spending goals. Here's what the president said today. Let me be clear. This is an outrageous thing for president to say. I can't fathom. I can't fathom from Truman on. They're rolling over in their graves here in this. As long as I'm president, America stands by our sacred commitment to our NATO allies as they have stood by their commitments to us repeatedly. Mr. Secretary, what happens to the alliance if Donald Trump is reelected? Well, I, don't, I don't think there's any question. I mean, uh, Trump himself would basically uh, say the same thing, that uh, he would uh, essentially undermine the NATO alliance. Uh, and, uh, you know, he, he talks about their contribution, but that's, that's, not, that's not the issue, very frankly. The issue is whether the United States is going to remain true to the alliance that uh, Truman built, that Eisenhower uh, relied on, that Ronald Reagan felt was very important to our security. Uh, and it is an alliance that remains critical to our ability to protect our national security. So, you know, I don't honestly believe that this country wants to return to isolationism. Uh, we tried that once before World War II. And we paid a price for that isolationism uh, in, in what happened uh, during World War II. We don't have to repeat that same mistake, and I don't think we will. But uh, to, hear, to hear a presidential candidate uh, make that kind of remark, uh, indicate that Putin could somehow go ahead and invade a NATO country, uh, it is, it's not only disappointing, it's not only irresponsible, 
but it comes very close to the line of betraying what our country is all about. Wow. Well, as we talk, Mr. Secretary, about the U.S. and its alliances, of course, the U.S. has to this point stood firmly by its ally, Israel, despite the operations they are undertaking in Gaza. We saw a hospital raided last night. There are questions about the operations they could undertake in Rafa, despite U.S. concern about making sure there are safeguards for civilians there. You told us a moment ago you think that the president may be, should be doing more to ensure Ukraine gets the aid that it needs. Should the president also be doing more to keep Israel in check? Look, uh, uh, there's no question that uh, uh, the president has to continue to pressure Netanyahu uh, with regards to what's happening in Gaza. Now, there's a lot of moving parts, but the most important part is the ability to come to a deal that provides a ceasefire, uh, a ceasefire, I believe, for five to six weeks, if not more, that allows for humanitarian aid to go in, and that also provides for the exchange of the hostages. That is the most critical deal that needs to be made right now. There's a lot of other moving okay. parts. We're obviously continuing attacks on the Houthis. We're obviously trying to get Saudi Arabia to recognize Israel. We're obviously trying to work on a Palestinian state for the future. But the most important thing right now is to cut that deal.